tonight, we're going to focus on two uh, main topics, and those topics are vaping, uh, which you know I, I would like to describe as an epidemic. I've been in this uh, business for a long time, um, and I can remember uh, the years that we were chasing down kids who were smoking conventional cigarettes. Uh, it's my belief that uh, this eclipses that by far, the numbers of kids that we're encountering and dealing with vaping. Uh, and it's transcending all the way down into our middle level and perhaps before. Uh, <coughs> fortunately, I've not seen any reports, but you know, tonight we have Christine Martins here uh, from the uh, Tobacco Free for a Healthy Safe New Jersey. Uh, is going to kind of talk more about it, so I certainly don't want to steal her thunder, but I want to give you some rationale as to why we felt this was important. Our administrators and our teachers are struggling with this on a lot of levels in terms of how to deal with it. Uh, we're encountering things that we didn't have to encounter before. Cigarettes were cigarettes, but now uh, vaping pens are disguised very cleverly in, in interesting ways. They don't give off the odor that cigarettes do, so it wasn't like you had a kid hiding in a stall in the bathroom and you could smell the smoke wafting out into the hallway, which would be your cue. That's not happening. Um, so there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, you know, things that are happening with vaping which create a bigger dilemma for us. Plus, I think that our kids are under the impression, the misimpression, that this is safe. And I think education will go a long way, not only in educating our kids, but educating our parents, uh, because it's very important that they're on board with us in what will be our crusade to stem this tide. The other concern is obviously the way in which they can conceal illegal drugs uh, you, uh, through the use of vaping. That's a very big problem for us. So in, in, in many days gone by, the way we would net kids that were perhaps under the influence from smoking marijuana is that they would smell. You have them sit in your office and close the door and come back in five minutes and they're like, oh, all right? And that's the information that you need to be able to take the child out for a drug test. This is a lot more elusive, a lot more difficult for our administrators uh, to deal with. So without further ado, I want to turn things over uh, to talk about vaping uh, in our schools and in our society, Christine Martins. Thank All right, you, Christine. So my presentation is called um, The New Generation of Tobacco Addiction. Uh, so I'm referring to e-cigarettes, electronic cigarettes. Um, the more formal name is Electronic Nicotine Delivery <coughs> Systems, um, shortened as ENTS. I will probably most likely refer to these products as e-cigarettes instead. Um, it may also be written as e-cigs. Basically, as, as you can hear, there's many different names for these products. There's vape pens, vaporizers, tanks, mods, jewels, hookah pens, whatever it is that you hear teens call them. Just now I'm going to refer to them as either e-cigarettes, ends, or e-cigs. Um, so real quick, what are these products? They're battery-powered vaporizers originally used to inhale liquid nicotine. So that was its main purpose. Um, so inside of the battery, it heats the liquid, which then produces a vapor. Now I use air quotes around the word vapor because the correct term is actually aerosol. So think of hairspray, hairspray is an aerosol. Um, and you can see from the image up here that <coughs> it's not just e-cigarettes that exist, but there's also e-pipes or e-cigars. So again, they're just battery powered. They look like your traditional old school tobacco products, um, but they come in different flavors and they're battery powered and they release aerosol. Um, and then if, of course, we'll talk about Juul. So then you have devices that look like a USB, a normal everyday product that just blends in with your everyday um, items. So a little history. Um, E-cigarettes were invented in 2003 um, by a Chinese pharmacist, basically. His father had died of lung cancer, so he wanted to create a safer alternative to smoking. He then sold his patent to a tobacco company. Um, and e-cigarettes were not put in the US market until 2007. So it's only been around for a couple of years to the point where people have been able to use it. But only recently, as of 2014, did it really start to become popular. Um, and we start to see more students using this in schools and in their community and, and, in, and adult, adults in general. So originally when e-cigarettes came out, they were disposable for a one-time use. So you'd run out of the liquid, you'd toss it out, and then you'd have to buy a new one. So it was a little inconvenient. Um, you couldn't refill it. 
with the, the flavor of your choice, you just stuck with the flavor that you had to purchase. Um, so companies kind of found that their product really wasn't selling um, because they kind of looked like traditional cigarettes. And again, the name itself, an electronic cigarette, it's very taboo, the word cigarette. Um, by now, your children are smart enough to know that smoking is deadly, it causes cancer, it smells, it's disgusting, it's gross. So the majority of them would most likely not be caught dead using something that even looked like a cigarette. So basically, the companies went back to the drawing boards, recreated their, their device, and added new features to them and making them look nothing like a cigarette um, and also giving it new names, now calling it vape pens or vaporizers. So now they're more colorful, more sleek, more innovative, and then they had features like now they were rechargeable, so you could charge them at your convenience, like in your home or in your car. You could also add whatever liquid or flavor of your choice, um, so again, which was great for younger people to have that, that option. And then they grew a little bit larger, where the battery was larger, so you wouldn't have to recharge it as much. Um, also, the cartridge that holds the liquid could hold more liquid, so again, you don't have to refill it um, as often. And then with these larger devices, they're usually called tanks or mods. Um, I have one up here. Um, so having a larger battery will allow the device to release a larger and thicker aerosol cloud, or vape cloud as most people call it, um, which allows um, people who use this product as a hobby to create vape tricks. I think I have a video, <coughs> yes I do. So this gentleman's using a larger device. Um, it allows him to create these thicker clouds and play with the, the, the device and creating these tricks. Um, there's even um, vape competitions that exist called clouding and it's as silly as two people going back to back, inhaling from their device and releasing the largest aerosol cloud and the person with the largest aerosol cloud wins. Um, and this is becoming very, very popular and they win cash <coughs> prize usually. Um, so it's like, it's almost now a competitive sport at this point. So the aerosol is not harmless water vapor as it's often advertised. Um, Water is not even a main ingredient. I have about five, six e-liquids up here. And if you were to read the labeling, water is not even listed on there. So again, they were just advertising it because e-cigarettes are an unregulated <coughs> industry. So you know, right now they can kind of get away with whatever it is they want to say about their product. Um, so studies have found cancer-causing chemicals such as formaldehyde. Um, they've also detected heavy metals such as lead, nickel, and tin. And then of course, um, with so many different flavors out there, in fact, there's over 15,000 different flavors out in the market. That's everything from cocktail flavors to fruity flavors to dessert flavors to candy flavors. You name it, they have it. They even have flavors that you never thought you'd try or want to try. For example, a best seller that I have here is called Unicorn Puke. <laughs> So, exactly, we laugh, it's funny, it piques our interest, we're curious, what's it smell like? It smells really good. Um, so again, this is a way to market towards teens or getting teens to initiate this product. So like I said, with so many different flavors, you need different chemicals to create that smell and taste. One chemical in particular, diacetyl, has been known to cause popcorn lung, uh, basically that can scar the smallest airways of your lungs, making it very difficult to breathe. Diacetyl was used in microwave popcorn, that's where it gets its name. Um, employees that worked at the popcorn factories started to have respiratory issues. So that's just where the term comes from. Also, a lot of teens are now gonna say, well, my vape pen or my e-cigarette or my jewel is nicotine free. Um, it is possible to have a nicotine free e-liquid <coughs> But 99% of e-cigarettes sold at convenience stores, supermarkets, and similar outlets contain nicotine. So the majority of the ones that you're seeing out there contain nicotine. Um, not to mention, it wasn't until this past August 2018 that the FDA required that all e-cigarettes and e-liquids have to have a warning label stating that their product contained nicotine. Um, other studies tested nicotine-free e-liquids that, that stated that they were nicotine-free and still found traces of nicotine in it. And that's simply, again, because it's an unregulated industry, 
kind of getting away with whatever it is that they can uh, before regulations start to apply. So we already started talking about nicotine. You guys know nicotine is the addictive component found in all tobacco products known to be as addictive as cocaine, heroin, and alcohol. Um, it also affects brain development. So the brain's not fully developed until 25. So especially for teens, this, that's a vulnerable population. Um, it affects the brain circuits that control tension, mood swings, um, and impulse control. And then there's the additional concern that these devices are, although they were originally invented to inhale liquid nicotine, that's not always the case. Um, people have put uh, THC oil, uh, basically marijuana, cannabis products in these products. Uh, one study found that one in 11 middle and high school students baked cannabis in the United States. One in 11. Um, so I'm, because I'm only limited to 30 minutes, I'm just gonna kind of pass through this. Although I will say, um, unfortunately now with a lot of teens experimenting with these products, they're stating you know, one of the reasons why they use it besides the flavorings and that their friends are doing it and that it's cool, is they think it helps them cope with stress, um, which is a big problem. So again, going back to cigarettes, uh, the program I come from, we help people quit smoking, and one of the most common reasons <coughs> why people continue to smoke or what, what causes them to smoke is stress. So again, history repeating itself <coughs> with a new product. So nicotine increases your heart rate and blood pressure, therefore it increases your risk for heart disease. And if you're truly relaxed, should your heart rate and blood pressure be high? No. So we need to inform our teens and students about this. And that what they're actually experiencing is when nicotine enters their system and releases dopamine in their brain, within a couple hours, nicotine levels drop. And that's when the cravings and the withdrawal symptoms start to kick in. And those symptoms teens might associate with um, stress, but in all reality, it's their body craving and wanting the nicotine. So I just want to briefly say that. <coughs> so the e-liquids out there, um, there are four main ingredients in the e-liquid. Usually it's nicotine, probably glycol, glycerin, and flavorings. Um, with the exception of nicotine, manufacturers will claim that the other three ingredients are all safe because it's found in food products. For example, flavorings. It's found in candy, we eat candy, everything's fine because it goes through our digestive system. Whereas e-cigarettes, we're inhaling these ingredients going directly to our lungs. So it's a completely different system and is obviously not gonna process the same. So um, right now, unfortunately, because this product is so very new, again, it was put in the US market in 2007, we really don't know the long-term health risks of inhaling these other ingredients. Um, unfortunately, this generation is the guinea pigs of what is to come from using this product. Um, I mentioned the popcorn lung, and with that said, um, so again, diacetyl, one Harvard study found that 75% of the e-liquids they tested, tested positive for diacetyl, which is a chemical known to cause popcorn lung. And then I have here the images of different e-liquids on your left. So you can see there's actual e-liquids that mimic food products and, and juices, like apple juice. Um, in the middle, it's mimicking the Sour Patch Kids candy. Um, at the bottom, it mimics uh, a whipped cream can. It's, it's appealing to teens and even young children who don't even know what it is, they might think it's actual candy or juice. So a lot of education needs to put, be put out there because there's no reason an adult needs 15,000 different flavors to choose from. So it just proves that they are marketing towards teens. So e-cigarettes have been known to cause fires, explosions, and serious um, injuries. Um, nicotine exposure can be toxic, especially to children and adults. Um, if swallowing or absorbing the nicotine through their skin, um, if ingested, it can lead to nausea, vomiting, and unfortunately there has been death. Depending on amount, the amount of nicotine in an e-liquid, less than a teaspoon can be lethal to a small child. So it really doesn't take much. Again, so keeping this product away from children, um, specifically locked away, um, out, of, out of their sight and out of their reach. <coughs> so tobacco companies are behind some of the brands that you see every day, and they're using the same marketing tactics they've done in the past that have pr proven to be effective. Um, so they've ha they have misleading claims, 
um, stating that their product is healthy and safe. So now there's that misconception that everyone thinks it's healthy and safe. Um, they also promoted that their product is a way to help people quit smoking. But in fact, e-cigarettes currently is not an approved method to quitting smoking. Um, more research needs to be done on if it can help people quit, uh, how to use it properly. Because unfortunately now what studies are finding is that smokers that switch to e-cigarettes are becoming dual users. So they're using their e-cigarette and their cigarette, therefore they're increasing their nicotine dependence, becoming more addicted. Um, they're also promoting that you can use it anywhere, specifically indoors, because now we don't smoke inside. Um, and then of course using the same themes, um, like flavors, the you know, rebellion images, glamour <coughs> images, celebrity endorsements, sponsoring <coughs> sporting events and music festivals, as well as discount prices always help because you know most teens don't have a lot of money. So when there's a discount, it might help them uh, make the product more affordable. <coughs> so again, in terms of regulations, nicotine concentration is not regulated. Um, this is gonna get a little complicated, but the nicotine levels in these liquids can range anywhere from zero, so again, nicotine free, to as, I have as high as 50 milligrams of nicotine. Now just so you can understand, one cigarette has about two milligrams of nicotine. So a pack of cigarettes, so you would do two times 20, that's 40 milligrams of nicotine for a pack of cigarettes. So here I have 50 milligrams of nicotine. And it's not 50 milligrams in the entire bottle, it's per milliliter. A milliliter is just 20 little drops. So in 20 little drops, that is equivalent to a pack and a half, uh, a pack and a half worth of cigarettes, uh, nicotine worth of cigarettes. So that's a lot for such a very tiny amount. Not to mention you have larger devices that can hold three times that amount. Now you're talking about 150 milligrams in this specific device that I'm holding here. Um, and you know, people are not becoming aware of their dosage. Are they going through that in a day? Are they going through it in a week? It's gonna depend on the user, but it's highly addictive. Um, there's also the issue with online sales to minors. So although there's an age restric restriction now, not just in New Jersey, but throughout the nation, um, a student can simply just go online to a vape website yeah and purchase it, there would be a pop-up that says, are you 18 or are you 21? So obviously, if they really want it, they're just gonna check off yes. And if they have a credit card or a debit card that they use for emergencies, they can simply purchase the product. Um, we're also not regulating products being made overseas. So again, China has been known to use dangerous materials such as lead and nickel. Um, which can have an impact on your health as well. And then of course, advertising. So for example, cigarette ads, um, tobacco companies have been banned from selling cigarettes on television and radio. And that's been uh, since the 70s. However, that does not include e-cigarettes. They can market their product wherever they want. Television, radio, the internet, Facebook, Instagram, social media, uh, Snapchat, the list goes on and on. So if anything today, they have more outlets to use to promote their product, and they're taking advantage of that. So this is just where our teens, so as of 2016, four out of five middle and high school students have seen an e-cigarette ad. That's more than 20 million youth exposed to ads. Um, and the majority of the exposure is coming from re retail stores, uh, followed by the internet, television, and then newspapers and magazines. So I am, so just recently, um, earlier this week or last week, the, the new tobacco survey for 2018 just came out and it's official. Um, E-cigarettes have reached epidemic levels in middle and high school students. Um, so this, is, this chart specifically is just comparing 2017 numbers to two, 2018. So this is current e-cigarette e use for high school students. It went from 11.7% of high school students are current e-cigarette users to 20.8%. So again, that's like 20 out of 100 high school students are current e-cigarette users. Um, the same thing happened for middle school students. So in 2017, it was 3.3, and it went up to 4.9 2018 for middle school students. Um, ultimately, that's 
More than three million youth are current e-cigarette users throughout the nation. Um, again, these are national numbers. Um, that same survey showed that the, the frequency of using e-cigarettes also increased. So now 28% of high school students have used an e-cigarette uh, on 20 or more days. The same thing, an increase in middle school students, and then even more have used um, because of flavor. That's at 68% used because of flavor. And then here is just in general current use of any tobacco product. So you can see for 2018, the use of current use of any tobacco product has increased when you know originally it was going down and decreasing every year has now gone up and has increased since 2015. And then this chart here is the 2014 New Jersey Youth Tobacco Survey. So I know the number, uh, the survey is a little outdated, but it is high school uh, New Jersey students. So again, e-cigarettes, number one tobacco product used amongst high school students, followed by hookah, um, cigarettes, cigars, and then smokeless tobacco. So basically what I'm saying is, although we've done a very good job educating our, our youth about the dangers of smoking, um, every year it continues to drop. New Jersey has done a fantastic job. Unfortunately, with e-cigarettes now on the rise, studies are consistently finding that teens who initiate e-cigarette use, within a year or two, they start to experiment with other tobacco products, including traditional cigarettes. So that leads to dual, dual use. Again, using two tobacco products at the same time. One study found that 65% of youth who had used an e-cigarette in the past 30 days 30 days, also reported using another tobacco product in the same time frame. This raises additional concern beyond the potential health effects of e-cigarettes alone. Um, this is among young adults, so it's not just our middle and high school students, but it's young adults. We're talking like college age students. Again, educated people who were never interested in smoking now experimenting with e-cigarettes. Um, so 40% of current e-cigarette users aged 18 to 24 um, are, were never smokers, but yet they're using e-cigarettes. 43% were, uh, were current smokers, so that's dual use. They're currently using an e-cigarette and their traditional cigarette. And then 17 were former smokers. So they haven't really completely quit. They're just using this product to either replace their cigarette um, or they're just hooked on this product alone. This is the highest age group of adult non-smokers to use e-cigarettes. Um, again, another study found that young adults who use e-cigarettes are more than four times more likely to begin smoking traditional cig cigarettes compared to their peers um, who did not vape, and that's within 18 months. So then there's Juul. This is the number one e-cigarette brand out in the market. Um, they have the warning label stating that their product contains nicotine and that nicotine is addictive. And real quick, for those who are not familiar with this product, so Juul looks like a USB. I have some here. I will pass them out so you can look at. I guess I should put a, a thing in. So it looks like a USB, and these colorful little squares that you see are called pods. That's what holds the liquid nicotine. Um, so basically you take the device, you grab your liquid, and you connect it. Sorry, it's a little stuff. And then you're good to go, you inhale, and um, you can start using it. So uh, you can just pass that around. You wanna pass this back around? So these colorful little pods that hold the liquid nicotine, it states that one pod is equivalent to a pack of cigarettes worth of nicotine. Now, in the tobacco world, we say it takes about 100 cigarettes for someone to become addicted. So if you do the math, only five of those pods is equivalent to 100 cigarettes worth of nicotine where someone becomes addicted. And when they sell the pods, they sell it in a pack of four. So by the time you've gone through your first pack, you're probably already hooked. So this is how they sell it again in a pack of four. Um, they also have a warning label stating that their product 
can cause cancer, birth defects, and other reproductive harm. So what makes Juul so popular and so unique is the formula that it contains. Basically, they take a free base nicotine, they add an acid to it, so that lowers the pH, which then creates a nicotine salt. So this nicotine salt is what's really unique. Um, they basically have a patent on it. And Juul claims that the nicotine salt formula increases the rate and, in, and the amount of nicotine delivered into the blood compared to other formulas. It delivers 2.7 times faster than other e-cigarettes. So a lot of teens talk about this buzz that they get from hitting it. It's, it's just how, it's that nicotine salt and how it delivers the nicotine. So Juul, Mark 10, the use, Blue and Logic um, control 97% of the e-cigarette market. Now, with the exception of Juul, those other four brands that I just mentioned are the tobacco companies. Now, of that 97%, as of October 2018, Juul controls about 75% of the market. So just so you can see here, this is the chart that breaks it down of the top leading e-cigarette brands. Juul is in red, and this even breaks it down by month, and you can see how every month Juul continues to rise. So it was in 2017 when Juul surpassed all other, or <coughs> the other popular e-cigarette brands, the tobacco company ones. And you can see how all the other brands are now declining because Juul's at the top. Um, they've been very successful. So one study found that 63% of youth aged 15 to 24 who used Juul did not know that all Juul products contained nicotine. That's really alarming because you're talking about age 15 to 24, we're talking about older teens and young adults. And again, this information is all labeled on the packaging. So they're not even reading the packaging of when they purchase the product or someone's giving it to them. Um, they're carelessly just using it because their friends do it or because it comes in different flavors, not thinking about the consequences of what they're actually inhaling. Also, with Juul being so unique, one of their, the reason why they've been so, so successful is they're one of the first major e-cigarette brands to rely heavily on social media to market and promote their product. Um, so if you have an Instagram account, you'll find a bunch of videos about Juul and people making memes and videos and jokes about it. It's very, very popular. It comes up on my account all the time. Um, and at, Earlier this year in September, they were running a discount price for $20 off your Juul starter kit. So any, so real quick, if you're not familiar again, um, a Juul starter kit comes with the device and four pods, uh, one of each different flavor. And it usually costs $50, but from September 5th to November 3rd, they were offering $20 off. That's a nice discount for a young teen. And then keep in mind, it's the discount is from September. What's going on in September? The teens are going back to school. They're catching up with old friends, letting them know, hey, did you see this? $20 off. They're making new friends, experimenting new things or trying new things with new friends. Um, so it was a great time to run that discount. Um, this study came from the Truth Initiative. Basically, they found that Juul users largely re report um, using fruity flavors um, and sweet flavors. 30% reported using the flavor fruity medley, followed by 28% mango, then cool mint, purple light, classic menthol, cool cucumber, and then of course last is tobacco. So again, flavors do play a role here. Among ever used marijuana with Juul, of youth who have ever used Juul, one in three use marijuana with the device. So basically they take the pod and they remove the, the, the cap. So it's this black cap that's here and there's like two hinges on each side. So I would just take my nail, um, flick it open. So I removed it. Then there's like a black piece that separates the top of the clear plastic and I removed that as well. And then I'm good to go. I would take my THC oil 
none of these are THC, I'm just pretending. And I would put it inside, and then I would close it back up, and then I'm good to go. And it was as simple as that. Um, so that's very common. And one in five students between 12 and 17 years old have used Juul in school. So it's very common to be using at school, especially the bathrooms. Um, one school confiscated a bunch of e-cigarettes in their pop-up ceilings in the bathroom. So if you have pop-up ceilings in the bathroom, I would check them. Um, and another school, on the first day of school, they found four male students in the same bathroom stall vaping. Um, so that's also common if you're seeing more than one person in the stall. So where are they getting it from? 74% of youth state that they're getting it from a retail store. 52% say they get it from a social source, so that's friend, family member, relatives. And then 6% state that they get it from the internet. Now, although the internet numbers are really low, 89% of youth who attempted to purchase online were successful. So just signs to catch students using in school. I believe we have a couple SAC members here. So now there's lanyards that you can, that hold your jewel specifically, as well as two pods. So if they're tucking the lanyard in their shirt and then whipping it out a couple seconds and then tucking it back in, that might be a sign. Um, in this image here, they hacked into a Sharpie marker, removed the ink, and put their device inside. So if you see them chewing on thick markers or pens, that might be a sign. Uh, leaving to go to the bathroom every day at the same time and their mood changes before and after. So they might be going through withdrawal symptoms, so they might be irritable in the beginning and then they go to the bathroom and they come back <coughs> a chipper. So that might be something. Also texting or using social media in class. So there was a vape challenge going on at schools where students were recording themselves using the device in class while the teacher wasn't paying attention or had their back turned. And then they'd send it out to their friends on Instagram or Snapchat as like a way to encourage the other one to do it as well. Um, uh, also, especially male students that return to class smelling like fruity flavors um, might be a sign. Um, and then looking for lanyards or hoodies, as I mentioned. And then I'm pass one of the jewels that are being passed around um, has like a cover to it. It's blue. And you can, so it's <laughs> sold separately. It's called Skins. That's what the cover is called. I have one here that's the Mona Lisa. So sometimes it won't even look like a USB. It just looks like some random little artsy device. Um, so having different skins of their device. So now the FDA is getting involved in regulating all tobacco products, including e-cigarettes. One of the first things they did was in 2016, they made the age of sale to purchase nationwide um, to 18. Uh, <coughs> since then, in 2017, they kind of got in a little bit of trouble. They extended the, the application deadline from 2018 to 2022. And we were gonna find out how the, these companies were marketing towards teens, what exactly was in their product that they were using. So the FDA got a lot of backlash, especially from health organizations like the American Cancer Society, the Lung Association, Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, the Truth Initiative, and several others. They actually filed a lawsuit against the FDA for extending this to 2022 because obviously that's a lot of time from now and we could have found that out all right now. This also gives the companies and the industry more time to advertise and market their product um, without any um, regulation behind it. So now they've been doing a bunch of things to, I guess, get back on our good side. Um, for example, they emailed companies that had e-liquids that mimicked those fruit flavors, like the juice, juice boxes and the whipped cream that I showed you. Um, they also recently did a, a raid at Juul and seized their documents on how they were marketing their product towards teens. Um, so that was a big deal. Um, so a Juul update, that being said, is two weeks ago, Juul has decided that they will temporarily remove their flavors at retail stores. Um, so again, this is temporary. However, they will still keep the flavored mint and tobacco available, and they will continue to sell their other flavors, their more popular flavors, online. Um, 
so we'll see how that ends out. But basically, this allows other competing uh, e-cigarette brands that mimic Juul, because there are many others that look like a Juul, but it's not a Juul, to now rise up and take advantage of this moment and sell their product in the retail stores. So again, teens can just use another product that just looks like a Juul and still have all their flavors. Um, so be on the lookout for other Juul lookalikes. So basically in New Jersey, since 2010, we have banned the use of uh, vaping in indoor public places. So you cannot vape at the mall, bars, or restaurants. Um, also in New Jersey, we were the third state to pass the Tobacco 21 law. So that went from 19 to 21 last year. And then many mun municipalities have actually banned the use of e-cigarettes in city-owned parks, playgrounds, and outdoor recreation centers. So if that's something you're interested in, um, I can give you the contact for the person who pretty much does all that work for you. It's just a matter of getting it passed. And then of course I have handouts up here. So one of the handouts is um, about talking to your teens about e-cigarettes. It's from the Surgeon General and they kind of break it down for you. Um, resources, free resources to help people quit. There's the New Jersey Quit Line. It's a toll-free counseling number for any New Jersey resident. There's also a smoke-free text. You would text QUIT to 47848. And there's a new grant, tobacco grant specifically, out there that um, is in the process. It just came out in October or it was awarded in October. Um, and there is a youth component. So basically, there's two parts to the youth component. One part is getting youth to advocate against tobacco products, so that includes e-cigarettes. Um, so it's getting policies passed or doing activities at their school or community to further educate their peers. The other component is, I guess you can say, is a cessation service to offer to schools that are having the issue of students using the product, vaping products, in their school. And instead of suspending the student, maybe offering this program as an alternative um, so that could be a potential op option. If that's something you're interested, in, I can give you the contact for that. I don't know too much in terms of details, but it is out there. And then we started a statewide campaign called Don't Get Vaped In. Uh, we have posters up here. Uh, so if you'd like one, it promotes the website. Um, and we also have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter if you'd like to stay up to date. This is just more resources, some of the resources that I already have here, but if you click on the last link, that is the person, if you're interested in making your city on parks or playgrounds <coughs> free, I would contact um, Kim Burns on that last link. And that is everything. Does anyone have any questions for me? Yes? How much money is this enterprise bringing in, and what countries are supporting that? Well, Jewel's expected to be worth, uh, I don't want you to quote me, but I believe it's $16 billion. Um, what countries are supporting this for the second part? I don't know anyone that's not supporting it. Uh, I, but I also haven't looked into it, so that doesn't, that doesn't say that there's a country not interested. I just meant, is it foreign countries that are pushing it in to our country? Um, you, you know, uh, I don't know. I know in England, though, they, or the UK, um, they're actually for e-cigarettes. They have high smoking rates, so, <coughs> but they've also regulated um, the nicotine concentration. So it's not like it is here where it's so potent. Um, so they're actually for it because, again, they do have high smoking rates and they want to use it as a safer or healthy alternative to smoking. Um, but again, that's not really what we're finding here in the States. Any other questions? Not specific to this district, but we've seen an increase at elementary levels, and is there a way to be tracking that? We've seen a lot of discipline in relation to school. Um, I have no data on uh, e cigarette use on elementary students. Anything else? Uh, did anyone want me to pass out something that they specifically wanted to see, the liquids, or? Um, any other device? Christine, do you have any information on, um, there's a perception, at least in this community, that there now is a black market for this, these products. Uh, you talked about social uh, purchases, but mm -hmm. is there any uh, information or facts to 
uh, translate or talk about where you have older kids who may be able to legally purchase these e-cigarettes in local uh, markets who are then reselling them to younger kids? Um, yeah, I think that's definitely happening. Um, and so maybe the student at the high school that's underage might be getting it from an older sibling or relative. And then, you know, so they're coming back with maybe four packages, which, you know, four packages. Um, each package holds four, so that's 16. They could be selling the pods then individually um, for a good, like, 10, 20 bucks. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure it's probably happening. So, Chief, you know, you may not know the answer to this question because we're all just trying to wrap our heads around this, right? Would would that be considered illegal? Uh, obviously, I would believe so. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if it falls under, you know, other things that would be considered like it's not. It's obviously not a controlled, dangerous substance. But you know, that's one of the things we're wrapping our heads around. I think most kids are buying it off the internet. Though. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just I'm just basing everything off my research, so um, I'm I'm sure that's. So they're using somebody's credit card, card. and, and, and to 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 their house. House. or gift yeah. cards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Still being delivered to your house, though. Like, how are they? You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. yeah at some point. People are asleep at the wheel. I guess. <laughs> um, also, a lot of merchants have been known to not card people, so you know people just. They, like students will talk, they'll tell you where to go to get this without being carded. Um, that's not really an issue. And yes, um, you can buy this on Amazon. So if you have a gift card, uh, an Amazon gift card, that's not an issue either. Yes. So if I have like an eighth grade student, for instance, I'm a middle school counselor, and they have a neighbor that they're really close with that's 17, and they go out on a car ride, and they're listening to music and driving around the community, and they come home, how is a parent supposed to know whether or not they've been using a tool. Is there any way of knowing? Or is it kind of masked? I mean, it's easy to hide. The jewels are pretty small. It hides in the palm of my hand. And the aerosol, um, so you saw earlier in the video that the aerosol is very thick. Mm -hmm. The aerosol with jewel is not as thick. It's very faint. It goes away pretty quick. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, the smell too. It's So it's it's faint as well. It doesn't last like for hours like a cigarette smoke would. Um, so I, I don't have the answer for you, unfortunately. Like maybe that's really Yeah, I mean, yeah. just keeping track of what they're doing, uh, talking to your teens in general, just um, teens are more likely to, or less likely to use tobacco products if they have the conversation with their parents and know that their parents are against these tobacco products. Um, so having a good communication um, with your teen, letting them know that they can trust you, educating them, little things. So like cigarettes, the nicotine, and Caroline, I'm glad you're here because you could weigh in or tell me if I'm wrong. I was always under the impression that the way folks get ni uh, addicted to nicotine is because nicotine restricts your blood vessels, increases your heart rate. And a over time, your body gets used to that increased heart rate so that when you don't smoke for a while and your heart rate starts going back into a normal rhythm, it starts sending off alarm bells in your body system, meaning that you need to put something in to increase your heart rate. So that rush or that feeling that our kids are getting early on is because of that rapid increased heart rate. Am I correct in that? Well, yeah, your body, gets, your body needs that. So, but, they, but is that initial rush for kids that are first starting out on this to make them feel good? That eventually goes away because that once they become addicted, their regular heart rate is what it is on nicotine. Uh, but that initial rush could be because of the increased heart rate. Is that what nicotine causes? Yeah, their body gets used to that. So Sandy here is our, our intern, oh, and she is a certified tobacco treatment specialist. Oh, uh, there you go. Um, also nationally. <laughs> yeah, I never um, smoke, so I don't know. So, uh, Sandy, you want to take over? Um, the, it's not so much that they're getting a high, high rush of uh, their heart rate's going to be up. Their heart rate just is up continuously right. over yeah. a period of time of smoking and using. What they're getting is the dopamine rush, the rush of the feel-good endorphin in the brain because the that out um, and over time the dopamine it naturally occurs by feel good sports food is suppressed and the only way they're getting that feel good feeling is through the nicotine and so then they smoke more they use more they eat it more and that's when they need that craving okay. or eventually they try harder things and that's that's the marketing that's the hook 
Yep. That's what keeps you coming back and buying stuff. Exactly. Now, the other thing I've heard is the, um, I've been to a couple of these workshops with the marijuana, which is 10 times stronger than in my day. Oh, yeah. And now with I've marijuana, been in the era when it first came out. Five to 20 times stronger than And they make like a the paste. Joint. They make a paste of the marijuana. Mm -hmm. And it's, like you said, there's no odor to it. And they make a paste and put it in the, the um, e-cigarettes. Yes. And it's really hard to detect. That's yeah. why we stop saying yeah. taking them on the trips, too. Well, just trying to stay up with the lingo. Like, we had policy that would prevent kids from wearing uh, T-shirts or anything that would be promoting. Right. Correct. Right? So, like, I think the word for what you're talking about is dabbing. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if everybody in here knows that. Yeah. But, you know, seeing kids wearing a shirt that says, you know, a dab a day, keep the doctor away. <laughs> That shirt should be coming off. And they're wearing them <laughs> in elementary school. We had a couple of elementary kids wear a shirt that we had mm -hmm. to have covered up. Okay. And it's scary what these, yeah. <laughs> what, that late, what age level these kids are wearing. But I will tell you, like I know even probably in middle school, my middle one said, a lot of the kids, believe it or not, she told me, they're, like I would say to her, how are they getting it? And she would actually tell me sometimes the parents because right. they yeah. were uninformed about all the, the nicotine and all the ingredients and they felt like, oh, if I let my kid do this, then they won't smoke cigarettes or marijuana. And they're, they're there's quite a few right? people she has told me that it's the parent. Well, one of the issues that we had it. early on is these uh, devices are you know expensive and I guess early, very early on, we were in the habit of confiscating them and a parent would come back up and retrieve it, which was kind of mind bending, you know, in terms of what you're talking about. That was expensive. Um, we're not returning them any longer. We've stopped that. We've confiscated and we keep. We're trying to do everything that we can to send a very strong message that this is not acceptable, whether you think it's okay or not. They got caught with it in school. We're keeping the device. And that's what we've been doing. And I've, we've actually been researching whether or not we could even go so far with policing on our buildings that we could issue citations when kids are caught vaping or smoking in our buildings. So we've never done that with smoking, but it's not been, it's really not, you know, periodically you'd catch a kid smoking, right? But this is a, this is a problem. And, and whatever we might be able to do that can help send a message, get our, you know, you, you hit the parents in the pocketbook with a citation because their kids got caught vaping in school, I think that will change behavior very quickly. And I will it say won't be popular, but from what this I've is the problem. seen, it's not. A lot of it is the kids you never expected that they would do it. You know, like I know for a fact that Lauren has friends who do it, and when I have found out and she's told me, I'm shocked at who she tells me it is. I right. know when they were at my neighbor's house, my neighbor found one of the devices in her basement, and was like, "Girls, who does this belong to?" You know, and so, and I know for a fact, like my eighth grader, Michael, just told me recently a bunch of girls in eighth grade tried it on Halloween when they went trick or treating. Well, and I was shocked, but I wasn't. But I thought, oh, wow, eighth grade. I, I think it's sort of like in the advent of cigarettes, you know, it was like popular and cool mm -hmm. in the 40s and 50s and 60s, and it wasn't taboo. There was no stigma attached to it until the research started coming out. People started dying of cancer, and you know, the government and everybody else has gone to great lengths to educate mm -hmm. everybody about the horrors of smoking. And so now you have a new phenomenon that people are under the misguided impression is not unhealthy and it is safe to do. And to them, it's not a stigma. So, you know, I think a lot of us are still, you know, we see smoke coming out of anybody's mouth no matter what the product is, that's bad for you. But we have younger kids who, you know, you know we've kind of uh, perhaps have stopped the hardcore education of why smoking is bad because I think we started to curb that and to a degree almost win that battle and now we've got a new battle to fight. Yes, um, I have a question for Mr. Moore. Is it, is it possible, because I'm curious what she said where the parents are just uneducated about the dangers of this? If you're confiscating um, these devices from students, is it possible to make it a requirement that the student and the parents sit and watch We can, I, I, I'm not sure, I, you know, I don't know how effective that would be, but I, I would absolutely say to you that we need to do more in educating. So this is the first step tonight. We're gonna put this video online. We're going to 
blast out emails with links to it to all of our families. We're not just going to leave it out there for people to find. We want them to see this and hear this conversation. Um, but yeah, there are perhaps, even if at the very least what we do is maybe through your organization or others, start gathering brochures and informational stuff so that when we do confiscate and deal with the parent that we're going to provide them with these materials. And in that way, we can continue to educate. I mean, at the end of the day, you can lead a horse to water. People have got to read what we give them, watch what we show them, and, and hopefully buy into it. But I, I think it's just going to be like everything else. It's just going to be more and more data is collected, more and more information, more and more people will get on board. Um, but we, ha we have to attack it vigorously. I, you know, thank you. That's a good suggestion. Um, also, to follow up on that, um, in April, through the, uh, through the counseling department, something um, that will invite the community and the parents to um, help at the high school on, on vaping and we'll have materials and things. Oh, that'd that would be great. Thank you for that. Okay. Is there a limit to who can sell it? It's legal, so if you want to open up a shop and sell it, they can just sell it? I mean, um, yeah, like so, for example, if you want to sell cigarettes, you need a tobacco license to sell cigarettes. Currently, with vaping products, you don't need a license to sell vaping products. Um, so that we can have a conversation with one of our recent graduates who's making a really a lot of money selling out of his house, selling e-cigarettes online. So he's a 20-something year old kid, a good kid, and that he's a sales rep now for e-cigarettes online. And this this is blowing me away. Like that yeah. this will yeah. Jenny, to piggyback with you, every day when I drive home I hear commercials on the radio for Jewel. And um, I think Going back to what Joe said and um, back there, educate parents. I've been doing this a long time, and I'm blown away by your presentation, what I've learned tonight. So I think educating our students, our community um, in general, because I learned a lot tonight. And you know, when you see the facts, mm -hmm. yeah. the same. Um, I do have resources that are available to download for yourself online. I have it from the CDC. Um, it's a great handout, a couple pages, but it pretty much states like how they feel about it and what's going on. Uh, the new numbers for 2018 to show that this is now an epidemic. Um, again, the Surgeon General, and I have these posters. If you'd like, if you're out of school, um, you know, maybe post them in the bathrooms, the hallways, uh, informing again, you cannot vape inside. Um, mm -hmm. So that's all available if you guys like. I can leave <coughs> them, take them if you need more. Um, you can reach out to me. Um, Again, my email address here is on the last slide. So if you have a copy of the PowerPoint, just reach out, let me know where you saw me, and I'll send you whatever it is that you're interested in. Yes. What we have to all remember, this is marketing. And marketing is big. And yes. this is big money in this. And people are going to hear this and not, and not realize what the side effects are. This is dangerous stuff. And any medical person will tell you, this is serious stuff. And unfortunately, it's not going to come out until a lot of people have been, you know, seriously injured yep. or killed from it. Right. It's just like cigarettes were back in the forties, yep. you know, twenties, thirties, and forties. Everybody smoked and it, everybody glamorized it, mm -hmm. and that's what's happening here. This is just the cigarette reinvented. Yep. And unless you're in the health field and really see what chemicals are, I mean, these are chemicals. Yes. And they're dangerous chemicals. And I think we need to educate right from the elementary level on up. And so we can't ignore it. I am available to present in South Jersey, so Burlington and um, Ocean County South. I present, currently I'm mostly presenting in middle and high school students, or high schools, on vaping. If you do want to do elementary, also have a generic, uh, like tobacco 101 presentation where we talk about cigarettes, but then I'll also address hookah and vaping, just so that they start to learn a little bit about it and kind of compare to how cigarettes are so dangerous. So that's also available too, and that's something you're interested in. Uh -huh. Christine, I can't thank you enough. Awesome. Yeah.